Hi everyone, my name is Madison Sherritt and I would like to welcome you to another webinar hosted by Premier's Data Alliance Collaborative. Today we will be hosting an introduction to Tableau Architecture, part of our BI Technology COP. We have in the room Senior Solutions Architect Russ Shaw, who will be running this session. Please be sure to take the survey prompted at the close of the webinar and let us know what you thought. You can also ask questions during the course of the webinar via the chat at the side of your screen. Hi everyone, this is Rush and we're going to talk a lot about Tableau architecture today, especially server topology and how to make informed decisions when you are deploying servers. So, so a lot of the agenda that we have today uh, is related to understanding the Tableau server components, right? So we are trying to understand what is the software doing? What are the different components of the software? What, how do they perform? What generates load out of those components? Uh, then we want to try and understand how to basically create a highly available Tableau environment. So we have one in Premier Connect Enterprise, and I'm sure a lot of our private warehouse members like CHS and uh, Carillion probably have uh, or are planning to have some of these environments. A lot of the considerations that we are going to talk about from a high availability and disaster recovery perspective are applicable to any kind of uh, application server. You know, they are not limited to Tableau, although some of the features definitely are uh, very Tableau-centric. So we look at those and what we ultimately want to get out of this uh, entire session is to try and understand uh, the server architecture so that we can make informed decisions on deploying a good server environment, deploying a good Tableau cluster. So this can be perhaps a little uh, uh, techy, a little geeky for uh, non-technology people, but there are things in this presentation that might be very useful to understand uh, for, for some of you solution-oriented people. So what, what we are going to do is we're going to try and cover the components of Tableau architecture, which will give you a perspective of what's happening behind the scenes when you submit a request to Tableau. Which part of Tableau uh, background process or Tableau server process actually performs what action, what task, right? So a, a big architectural objective for any server environment, for any infrastructure environment, is always going to be how to create a scalable environment, right? You want to scale to support uh, multiple concurrent requests. Uh, on your server environment, and you want speed in your environment, right? That um, anybody who is working on Tableau and visual data discovery of any kind, any kind of analytics, requires speed in order to keep the audience engaged. So that's going to be one of our primary concerns when we look at this. But there are other concerns that a user uh, never experiences but that an IT department definitely needs to consider. And those are considerations of high availability and disaster recovery, right? And these are two different things. So we will talk about what a, how do you take into consideration each of these things and what do you do with Tableau when you are trying to configure a highly available environment, right? So, so I'm going to jump into some of these things, and before before I jump into it, I want I do want to um, have a terms that I'll be throwing around. Right, some of these terms might be really elementary to some of you, and some of this might help you to understand as we talk about each of the Tableau processes. Right. Um, We'll talk about a lot of Tableau server processes, right? And each of this process is really an instance of a computer program that is being executed in a Tableau server. Each process will have, it, will have its own set of resources. For example, memory is a type of resource. And that resource will not be shared with other processes. So processes can, be, can grab the resources and hold on to them. And when you are configuring a server, environment, you need to recognize that and configure it in such a way that you can support multiple processes on multiple servers, for example, right? 
A thread is an instruction of a process. So if an, in an instruction set, there are multiple instructions that a, compu that a software makes to the computer or a node, and those instructions are enacted or enforced or executed in parallel, right? So threads within a process will share, a res share the resource that process has grabbed. A server, for example, Tableau server, is a program that is running to serve the requests for other programs or other users, what have you, right? So a server is a software term, but a server is sometimes also referred to as a physical computer or a node or a virtual computer or a node, right? That can run more than one server processes or services, right? Scalability, again, is the ability of a server to support multiple simultaneous requests. And when I say server here, I am referencing the software server, right? I'm referencing the Tableau server's ability to support multiple simultaneous requests not necessarily making them faster though, right? Scalability is not necessarily about making a single action faster, although scaling up an environment may lead to that. But scalability is not an issue of speed. Scaling up and scaling out although can increase speed, right? So scalability is often referenced to in two different ways. How do we scale up our environment and how do we scale out? We'll talk about how Tableau in scaling up you can scale the RAM infinitely, but it may not make sense to have a Tableau server that is more than eight cores, right? A Tableau as a software doesn't use necessarily more than eight cores. So at that point, scaling up your server would be meaningless. You would want to scale out and add more servers in your cluster. High availability, right? A highly available server environment would be a software environment where a failure of a component process, a server process, does not lead to an abrupt failure of the server itself. It should allow for graceful decline of performance. It should allow for migration of, that, of the client request being processed on the failed component to another working component in the server. And that feature itself specifically is known as failover. So a highly available environment will definitely have a few features. It will definitely have failover component to it, a failover feature to it, and it will in Tableau by necessity have a, a cluster, a distributed environment, right? So a distributed system is a system in which uh, components of a software, processes of a server are executed on multiple computers. Uh, the components interact with each other in order to achieve a common goal. Okay, I was just looking at the, um, um, the chat that was going on on the Level 3 conference, sorry. I'll resume back. The first component of Tableau server that we are looking at, and the diagram that you're looking at is the diagram that is available in almost all Tableau white papers, Tableau presentations. So this is not something that I came up with. You know, this is really referencing how Tableau likes to uh, diagrammatically represent their own server, right? So the gateway process is the is the front door and the traffic cop process of Tableau. It is a very lightweight Apache web server in Tableau. It really receives the request from the clients or from the users. So when you log into Tableau server, you're first coming to the gateway and submitting your request that I want to log in. At that point, Tableau will say, okay, you want to log in? Let me, let me forward your request to the application server so that you can be authenticated, so that we can verify you are who you are, right? So it is the gateway who will field any request. When you come in, when you are in the Tableau server and you want to load a visualization, a workbook, or a view, right? It is the gateway that's building that request and then forwarding it to VisQL process or other processes. At the end of Processing your request, Tableau's gateway process will reassemble the output of different services or different server processes and return that HTML response back to your browser, right? 
The gateway will also load balance some of these requests between different VSQL servers and application server processes. So if you have two different VSQL servers running on server processes running on one server, Tableau will uh, Tableau Gateway will, on a round robin basis, send re first request to uh, VSQL Server One and second request to VSQL Server Two. All right. So Pat Willinger, uh, Pat Willinger is asking a question. Pat, I'll take your question at the end if you don't mind, but. Um, it would make sense in some scenarios. It would not make sense in others. So I will come to what what are those scenarios at the end. Um, again, Gateway is a multi-server, single process, and multi-threaded, right? So each server can have only a single Gateway process running. It cannot have multiple processes or multiple instances of Gateway running in them, right? Let's go to the next one, The what, what is known as the application server, also known as the WG server in Tableau. This is the server process that basically executes everything but the visualization in Tableau. It is performing your authentication and authorization. All the pieces of authorization are also performed by SQL Server, so I might be a little over the board there. It is performing all kinds of content management and search uh, processes that you submit. So if you're searching for a particular uh, uh, user or you are searching for a workbook in Tableau. It is the gateway forwarding the request to the application server and then the application server goes to the search sub-process, which is a Solar-based search indexer, to kind of search what's going, where is that stuff in the repository, right? Uh, whatever you're seeing in Tableau that's not a visualization, toolbars, comments, organization of content and projects and workbooks and views, and groups, all of this is being done by your application server. Multi-server, multi-process, multi-threaded, right? VSQL server, this is the heart and mind of Tableau. This is the brains behind the operation. This is what Tableau is known for. A lot of people will actually use only this process of Tableau as a visualization engine and embed it into their other softwares. That's possible, right? This is the process that provides the same functionality as our Tableau desktop, and it's really a high affinity, resource heavy process. So when we talk about gateway, it's not really resource heavy, it's a very lightweight process. You really don't need a lot of memory or a lot of CPU cores for that. When we talk about application server, unless you have you know, 2,000 or 3,000 users concurrently logging in, Application server is not going to use that much memory or CPU cores. It's really VSQL. That's the big, that's the elephant in the room. That's what's really a high affinity resource heavy process. It's CPU hungry to some extent, but it's really a memory hungry process. And it'll eat up the memory you throw at it. You put in eight gigabytes per core in your server, which is the recommendation of Tableau, it'll eat it all. It really loves memory, so it's a memory-heavy process, and it pro it is everything that produces Tableau content. So everything, you know, when we talked about application servers, we said everything that's not a visualization, that's not content that you're consuming in your Tableau server, this is everything that produces that, you know. It's really taking your request and generating queries, it is then executing those, um, those queries that are executed by the databases, and then it's really reassembling all of that queries, all of that stitching all the queries together and producing the visualization. So a lot of stitching of queries is going on here, right? Um, it's, it's also generating the visualization that are being served to you when you subscribe to one of the workbooks, right? So the workbook subscription is really being performed by backgrounder process. But anytime you subscribe to a visualization or a workbook, really, Tableau VSQL has to first generate, then it gives it to the backgrounder who deals with the entire process of subscription. Multi-server, multi-process, multi-threaded. So each server can have uh, multiple process, multiple VSQL server processes on it. It is a multi-threaded process, and you can have multiple processes on multiple servers. 
data server, and this is all going to come together shortly, right? So when we look at the whole communication and how it happens. So data server here serves as a, is really serving as a proxy for your data sources. So Tableau is probably uh, in the vanguard of how uh, it accesses data even in graphic user databases, and now REST APIs have come to Tableau and have been integrated to Tableau. So really, uh, one of the most um, prolific um, data servers we have in any BI environment. It really serves as a proxy to a diverse array of data sources from traditional RDBMSs, data warehouse appliances like Vertican, Netiza, and Teradata, to Amazon Redshift, Google One Query, all of it, right? And this data server is also basically executing uh, processes that allow for centralized metadata management, right? When you publish your workbook and along with it your metadata for that workbook, it is the data server that's really fielding some of those requests and executing them. It is also invoked when you publish a data source to the, from the desktop client to the Tableau server. Again, it's multi-server, multi-process, multi-threaded, so each server on which you install Tableau Worker you can have multiple processes of data servers running there, and it's okay, multi -threaded. Backgrounder process, right? So backgrounder process, another heavy, heavy, heavy duty process in Tableau. It's generating a lot of load in your Tableau servers. It's a low affinity process because it's not something that the user comes in and says, okay, I want to load my VSQL right now. Now that's high affinity. It's going to cause a lot of, you know, I.O. traffic. Uh, Backgrounder doesn't necessarily create a lot of I.O. traffic, but it is resource heavy nonetheless because it manages a lot of different things in your Tableau server. It refreshes the Tableau data extract. And a lot of you who probably are very new to Tableau uh, may not know what a Tableau data extract is, but a Tableau data extract is a columnar data store. It really is a database in its own self, right? And so this Tableau data extract is basically a way for Tableau to consume data from disparate sources and store it into a columnar data store within Tableau server. Um, and Backgrounder is the one which will refresh this extract if you have a schedule for refreshing Tableau data extracts. It will compi compile the entire .tde file, the Tableau data extract file, and then forward it to the data engine. And the data engine stores the TDE file. But the compilation, the creation of that is done by the backgrounder. The subscriptions are processed by the backgrounder. When you are assigning permissions, the backgrounder is being invoked. When you are syncing users from your Active Directory to your Tableau server, the backgrounder is at work. When you are cleaning up, backing up, restoring Tableau environment, the background is at work. So heavy duty work being done by the backgrounder, right? So if you have a lot of people creating a lot of Tableau data extracts, it might be worth it to consider a server topology where backgrounder is restricted to a different server itself. And we'll come to that. Data engine, as we said, data engine is really always working hand in hand with the backgrounder. The backgrounder creates the Tableau data extract and the data engine stores it. And then the data engine basically responds to any visualization that has been created on top of the Tableau data extract. So what do I mean by this, right? Tableau data extract, as I said, serves as a database in itself, right? So if it serves as a database, then somebody has to basically field the user requests and process them. So that, re that re processing of requests is being really done by the data engine. The creation of that database and the refreshing of that database is done by the background. The data engine is really fielding the request from VSQL server. When a user creates a visualization on data that is stored in the Tableau data extract, it, the user is really using the data engine. The user is not connecting to any database like Natiza. It's really only connecting to Tableau. And so it is Tableau Data Engine who is then executing those requests and processing those requests. 
So it works hand in hand with the background. But there are certain limitations with the data engine. You cannot have more than two processes running off a data engine in any given Tableau environment. So in a one single Tableau environment, server cluster, you can't have more than two processes, which means that if you have a single server environment, you can possibly have two data engines running. But you would have most probably a distributed install, and in that case, no more than two servers can host a data engine process. And one of which will be read-write process, and the other will be read-only process. Data engines can be heavy processes because they are really serving as databases. Let's remember that. They really are storing this data, and they are actually processing the requests of the data. So they are doing a lot of heavy-duty work. And so they generate a lot of load. So you have to be cognizant of that. And you want to think about how you can um, process, how you can optimize your server configuration with the data engine. Uh, Tableau really likes to claim that the Tableau data extract will outperform most, uh, most databases, but this is true to a limited extent. And it's true to a limited extent because it's a columnar data store. And a columnar data store, as we see again and again, has become a hot topic right now. Vertica is a columnar data store. A lot of people in Hadoop are moving towards columnar databases. And they do outperform traditional row-based databases. But we, be, we need to be cognizant that most of the stuff that's happening in Hadoop, Netiza, or, or Netiza doesn't have a columnar data store, sorry, Vertica, um, all of those things are really processing requests on multiple nodes. They're not restricted to two nodes. Remember that. They're not restricted to two nodes. And that's a problem with Tableau, and Tableau knows this. So when I was at the Tableau conference, I was talking to a lot of people on this architectural concept, and I said, you know, there are limitations. Beyond a certain point, the Tableau data extract will not outperform something like Netiza or Vertica. It will actually lag. And it's because of this feature that you don't have multiple nodes to service this request, right? So they, they are working towards making this N nodes, scalable to N nodes. And once it's done, I think you will see Tableau Data Engine pick up a lot more. A lot of people will be actually working with Tableau Data Extracts even more than they do right now. I'll come to the repository. Any BI application, any, any application as such is going to have a metadata repository. When we talk about a metadata repository, we are not talking about data that is being used for creating your visualization, right? The data that is being presented in your visualization is your database data or your Tableau data extract data. The metadata repository is really the list of users in who can access your Tableau environment. The groups that you have created all out of those users, the list of those groups, the assignments that um, you know, permission assignments, group assignments, prod list of projects, workbooks, worksheets, all of this is stored somewhere, and that storage area is the Tableau metadata repository. It's a Postgres repository, um, and it really does a lot of work with your WG server. It does a lot of talking to your WG server, and it also does some authorization work with the WSQL server. You can access this through a SQL interface, right? It's only a read-only access. You can never directly write it, write onto it. And really, this is a single server, single process, single threaded. You can only have one active metadata repository, right? You cannot have multiple. You can have, and then you can have hot standbys. Search. This really is a minor, very minor process that's happening in Tableau, a lightweight process. It's a solar -based, uh, Java-based solar search. Uh, it's very common now. Almost all Cognos uses Solar Search Indexers. Almost every BI application I know has now started using the Solar Search Indexer. So, uh, really, uh, it's really lightweight, and uh, it's really used when you submit search requests in Tableau. When you want to search a user, a workbook, etc., searching content basically, and licensing. Now, this is typical of Tableau. Uh, it's not something that I have seen in Cognos, for example. I've not seen this in uh, data states, for example. Uh, I've not 
seen this in micro strategy, for example. Although micro strategy is thinking of something like this, and there are probably others which do something similar. But this licensing process is a process that runs in Tableau primary administrative node, and we'll come to what a primary administrative node is. It really runs on that primary node, and it really calls back to Tableau and reports to it whether you are under the licensing agree agreements that you have. Uh, you are contractually bound to but with your Tableau contracts and you know really is about Tableau checking up on you and saying whether you are on license you are licensed to do what you are saying you are licensed to do um, you have an eight hour window after Tableau fails to actually get the uh, primary node back up again otherwise all you will become unlicensed so the licensing process checks back with Tableau every eight hours, right? So we'll talk about this. This is a little tricky. This one is a little tricky when we talk about failovers. Here's a Tableau communication flow. This wonderful diagram was given to me by uh, one of our Tableau reps when they came to make a presentation on Tableau to us uh, about a year back. And I've just modified it a little bit, so do want to make a full disclosure. I have added the search indexer into it. Um, and really this is kind of helping us understand uh, when the requests come from mobile or browser uh, laptop environments or when you make tap command uh, requests uh, or when the administrator makes a tap command request. You know, normal user wouldn't make a tap command request. Uh, what's going on, right? Uh, the gateway is fielding these requests and then how are these requests being processed and who's building them really, right? So we know that VisQL server and the application server are doing the bulk of the work. The application server does a lot of work with the repository, the search indexer, right? And the VisQL is doing a lot of work with the data engine because, and it's doing a lot of work with the data server because it's going to the data server to fetch data from the databases. It's going to the data engine to fetch data from the Tableau data extract. The application server is going and authenticating users. Um, application server is fielding search requests and sending them to the search indexer, right? So this is the flow and the way it happens and uh, how it's governed by Tableau. And it's really important to understand this because this will help us in understanding our server topology and how we can put server topology. This in conjunction with the knowledge which server component is heavy and which server component is light and also the knowledge of the fact that Tableau has something called a licensing process, right? Which is pretty uncommon and which defines what is a primary server versus what is not a primary node. So we will come to that and we will talk about this, but let's look at the summary of high availability here, right? So when we talk about high availability and we are looking at the summary here of each of this process, we can see that you can have a lot of active active process on multiple servers. With SQL, data servers, application servers, you can have them active on multiple servers at the same time. Right? Server A can have two VSQL server processes running. Server B can have two VSQL server processes running. No problem. The gateway will just, on a round-robin basis, send requests to each of these server processes. But then you have something like a repository, which is active, passive, active and on a hot standby. So the repository can only have one process running at any given time. And then if that repository fails for some reason, for excessive load, for any reason, for malfunction of any kind, then the hot standby or the passive repository will come automatically up, right? It will fail over and the hot standby will come up. But then you see something like licensing process here. And I say something like manual. And this will freak you out. You're saying highly available at, uh, environment and it's not failing over, it's not active, or it's not on a hot standby. Well, it's not, okay? So that, some, that is something Tableau knows is a problem, that it's not automatic failover, that it's a manual failover here. And so that's the key point, that that's the single point of failure that we have.
so that if this component fails it will cause after 8 hours mind you not not during that 8 hours but after 8 hours it can cause the entire tableau server to fail if you do not manually bring up the backup primary right so this primary node is the node that is running your tableau licensing process and that causes a lot of confusion for people, right? So we are using the term primary in multiple ways. I'm talking about a primary repository process, and I'm also talking about a primary node, and this can cause a lot of confusion. So I want to clarify that a little bit. So Tableau has two kinds of licensing, interactor license and CPU or core-based licensing. Now, when you have an interactor license, you can have unlimited hardware configuration. There is no restriction on your hardware configuration, but interactor licensing after a certain point can be expensive. If you have, for example, more than 500 to 1,000 users in Tableau, and the concurrency goes beyond 20 in Tableau server, it's time to probably make the switch from an interactor licensing to a CPU or core-based license. But, you know, I'm not here to recommend how, which kind of licensing you purchase. Uh, it all depends on the kind of strategy you have. We're not defining any kind of um, thresholds on when you should do it, but it seems to us that at beyond a point of 20 to 25 concurrent users, it's time to kind of move on to a core-based license. Uh, you know, a core-based license allows for unlimited users on Tableau Server, but it places hardware restrictions, especially CPU or core-based restrictions, right? Minimum configuration for core-based licensing is eight cores, and then it, you can add more cores to your licensing, or, or to your licensing scheme, obviously to support additional concurrency or to scale your environment. Now we come back to that idea of primary node versus a worker node and how a primary node is different from a primary repository and a hot standby repository or a passive repository, right? So a primary node is any node in Tableau which is running the licensing service or licensing server process. You cannot have more than one of this process running at any given time in Tableau because you embed your license key in this primary server process, right? So you cannot have more than one license licensing process running. And wherever that licensing process is running, that will be considered the primary node. It also will execute some of your tab admin processes or tab admin command processes. In a distributed install, if the primary runs only licensing, search, and gateway processes, the number of cores and CPUs allotted to that primary node will not be counted against your core licensing, right? So let's say you have a free server install, a cl free server cluster for Tableau installation, and you have a primary which has eight cores, and you only run, and you should not do that, by the way, but if you, because these are all lightweight processes, but you only run licensing, search, and gateway processes on it, they will not be counted against your uh, CPU allocation or core allocation for your process, uh, for your licensing. So that's really nifty. It's really useful to know this. What is it? It's really useful to know this because oh, we have some music going on. The conference has been muted. There we go. Okay. So. All right. Um, so we have the primary as administrative node. I'll move on to the worker. Now, worker is whatever runs all the other processes. All the processes other than licensing, search, and gateway, if they are running on a node in your cluster, in our distributed cluster, that's going to be considered as a worker. The number of cores here are going to be counted in your licensing. So we know this, how the licensing works. We can create a server topology that will work for us now, right? If a primary runs other processes, it just acts as another worker B. Now, what does that mean? If you have two servers, and one server is running the primary, but it's also running WSQL server process, it's also running data engine server process, well, that's going to be considered both primary and worker. 
It's really a primary that acts acting like a worker bee. But the distinctive point here is that the primary is the node on which the licensing process is running. That's all you need to remember. That's the elementary way of looking at it, right? So let's go towards a server deployment topology. Our server topology, single node architecture, right? Single point of failure here. If this server fails, we are in total trouble. We've lost the active gateway, we've lost everything. Uh, we would have to bring back the server up. You know, it's a single point of failure here. Nothing we can do in this topology to make anything highly available, right? Not, we can't even make a single process highly available at this point, right? Let's look at a three node architecture with an external load balancer. Now, this is a pretty standard topology. The way we have deployed Cognos uh, in Premiere is with this topology in mind, although we, we may add a third, uh, you know, a fourth node pretty soon uh, for scalability purposes. But this is pretty standard stuff. You have an external load balancer which is acting as a very lightweight node, doesn't count against your core licensing, right? And then you have a primary which also works as a worker B. It's working with working all the server processes. And then you have a worker where it's not running all the other processes. In this case, a lot of things have become highly available for us, right? We have two active gateways. So if the prime if, if the worker fails, if the active gateway and the worker fails, or if the worker fails, we still have the primary running with the active gateway. Any of the stuff that you are seeing in the worker, any of the processes you are seeing in the worker, if it fails, you are fine, right? What is not highly available in this environment, right, is really the active data engine. You see that active data engine with read-write, right? That will become, you have two di different active data engines. And I have said one is, both of them is active, but one is really, read-write active and one is read-only active, right? What does that mean? What do I mean by that? So at any given point in Tableau server, only one data engine process can write the Tableau data extract which is being compiled by the backgrounder. When the backgrounder is compiling the data extract and sending the data over to the data engine, only one data engine can write it. The other one is always in a standby mode when it comes to writing. When it comes to writing. But when it comes to reading, when it comes to basically serving the requests for your visualization, when a, when a visualization is querying a Tableau data extract, both of them are active. So from, from that perspective, even a data engine is now highly available for us. What is not highly available in this scenario is really licensing. Right. There is no backup for my licensing. If that primary failed and I don't have a server for a backup primary, I'm in total trouble. This is not a highly available architecture at that point. Right. So what is the requirement for high availability? Right. That server topology must have a distributed install. Right. There must be something that is used for load balancing purposes. There must be a standby repository. There must be a standby data engine. And most importantly, there must be a failover primary for the entire Tableau server to be highly available. What was missing up here was that licensing piece, was that failover primary. I don't like to call it failover primary. I like to call it backup primary. <laughs> but, you know, because it's not an automatic failover. It's a manual failover. But you get the gist of it on how that will work now, right? There are other considerations that we want you to make when you're doing uh, your Tableau server install. We want some network considerations going on here. So static IP addresses are important, especially in a highly available environment. They are not important in a single node server environment. And static IP addresses are important because these servers need to talk to each other. Right. This is the same case when we go to Tableau. And a lot of times all these cloud-based VMs uh, don't have them. Uh, they have dynamic IPs and that can be trouble. You can't really configure a highly available Tableau environment in those environments. Right? Um, the other thing 
that is not important, but it's optional and we recommend it, is the subnets, right? You want your Tableau servers to be on the same subnet so that its performance is not impaired. Sometimes a lot of your infrastructure departments, what they will do is may end up putting servers either as a strategy because they have different data centers or unbeknownst to them, accidentally, which is, uh, which is not acceptable, uh, but uh, they may sometimes end up doing that um, and put the Tableau primary node and the workers into different subnets and that can impair performance. So you want to be very cognizant of it. I think most of the times though your infrastructure department is not dumb. They are doing it for some specific reasons. So work with them. Ask them why they have it in different subnets. Most probably it's because they are different data centers and they're trying to do something uh, from a load balancing perspective. So you want to you want to probably talk to them about, about that. Um, there are some primary failover considerations, right? Um, we know we've talked about the fact that the term primary is very confusing. It's an administrative node, and I, I would like it to be just called an administrative node, not a primary node, because the primary can really function as a worker. So really, that's not a primary node. It's really an administrative node versus a non-administrative node. So that's one distinction I would like Tableau to make, and I myself in my head always make that. And I, I think you should keep that in mind because when you are communicating to other people, this can get really fuzzy. A failover primary is a, is a really a second primary machine that can be brought up to replace the existing primary node so that you can have that kind of a failover experience for your administrative node. But it's a manual process. And it must be configured when the cluster is down or especially when the primary is down. So you have to bring your primary down when you actually create your failover primary. And this is because the license key is the same on the two servers. And that is also the reason why Tableau doesn't allow a, a standby primary. That is the reason why Tableau doesn't have a standby primary because two servers would then be having the same license key and both would be actually contacting Tableau back and saying we have this license key and that could cause trouble. So they need to do some architectural changes in how they have built these processes fundamentally to allow a hot standby of a primary. Right. Now, as I said, your Tableau server, if, even if your primary fails and you've not brought back your backup primary up, your you have up to eight hours to bring the failover primary up. So let's say in this process it's 145 or it's 245 and my Tableau server failed. And let's say I, my Tableau server last contacted the Tableau company server and told that server that, you know, I am under license agreement, I'm under the agreement, I'm, I'm abiding by it. Now I have up to 10 p.m. today to bring up my failover primary because my server just failed at 2.45. So it's about seven hours and 15 minutes. Now let's say my Tableau server failed at, at 9.59 p.m. I'm in trouble. Everything will go down at 10 o'clock in one minute. So this eight hour window is also a little bit fuzzy, right? I mean, they talk, they all, Tableau marketing folks will always talk about how we have an eight hour uh, failover window, right? So that's not true really, because at 9.59 if I failed, the last time it pinged the Tableau server or company server was at two. So it's going to ping again at 10, so I have only one minute to really bring back manually my backup failover, backup primary. So keep that in mind, right? Uh, so really high availability feature not completely baked out in, not completely baked out in Tableau. Almost everything is, but the licensing piece is really the troublemaker for us. This is really the high availability topology that you are looking at, right? Um, you can now really be, do a very interesting topology where you can just have four cores or two cores on your primary. They're not going to count against your core license. And you can devote eight cores and eight cores in your worker one and worker two and make a really nice or good um, Tableau environment. You can also have an eight core license uh, in a highly available uh, uh, configuration. And again, then you would give your worker one and worker two four cores each. Right, and then I would recommend that you only run uh, no more than two VisQL server processes on each of this server. And I would recommend that you never go more than 
for VisQL server processes on any given one server. VisQL is a memory hungry um, is a memory hungry uh, process. It does leverage um, each core as it invo as it uh, executes a, pro a VisQL server process. But beyond a certain point, uh, it's not going to give you a lot of bang for your buck when it comes to C uh, CPU cores, right? So that, you know, I said more than eight cores may be unnecessary for almost all Tableau server processes except the data engine. The data engine is really the database, the Tableau database. And I mean database differently from the metadata database. That's your, that's, that's your repository. This is really your Tableau data engine that I'm talking, uh, Tableau database that I'm talking about, Tableau data extract. So it can actually potentially use more than eight cores. Now it will definitely use more than eight cores. It is more, the most core of air process that Tableau has, okay? And so only if you're running, uh, if you want to have, if you have a lot of data extracts, if you have a user base that doesn't care to connect or uses live connections, a lot less live connections and runs a lot more uh, data extracts, then you, you can think about having more than eight CPU cores, uh, more than eight cores in your server. Uh, disaster recovery scenarios, and this gets really interesting. You know, I, I, would, I would have loved to actually, I forgot to involve my uh, friend uh, Neil Stein, who is our infrastructure manager here. Uh, this is all his uh, teaching to me, right? So you know, Neil will always talk about uh, what do you mean by disaster recovery? He comes up with this counter arguments all the time with me. And the idea that he always comes up with is, well, you have to think of it in two different ways. And this is pretty standard thinking in uh, infrastructure shops, IT infrastructure shops. They will always talk with the uh, managers and talk in two different terms. You know, They're talking about recovery point objectives and recovery time objectives, the RPOs and the RTOs. What they mean by this is really uh, your pain threshold. What's your pain threshold? In terms of how much data loss are you uh, can you withstand and how much dime, downtime can you withstand of a server, right? Mm -hmm. Disaster recovery is really a scenario where your, even your highly available environment has gone down. Disaster has struck and nothing you can do about it. Everything has gone down and that's when disaster recovery comes into picture, right? So typically that will be that will cause a lot of problems for a company because you will now have to move toward route the requests of your users to another data center potentially, right? So disaster recovery strategies entail uh, creating a replica of a data center, which can be very expensive, uh, but you can create the data centers in different ways. You can have a hot data center, a warm data center. I like to also call it a lukewarm data center and a cold data center, and they all have different meanings. I don't want to go into the details of them, but they're very interesting uh, concepts of how people try to solve a problem. What essentially we are trying to do is take a backup of your Tableau server, right? And take a backup of that server and store it into either a different data center or a different data drive for that matter at a point in time. So when did I take a Tableau backup, right? This is standard backups that you are taking in Tableau. Uh, the feature is not as robust as I would like uh, as it is in Cognos, for example, where you can schedule your backups. In Tableau, you can schedule native backups, but there are some limitations in how you're backing them up. Um, in either case, uh, it can be fully automated with shell scripting, right? But we would like an administrative console in Tableau that can allow us to schedule that, like Cognos and MicroStrategy. Uh, but be that may, you can uh, sh um, you can batch script it, not shell scripts. Since Tableau is purely a Windows Server environment, it's batch scripting. Uh, you can batch script your Tableau uh, backup at a point in time, every day or every week, depending on your pain threshold. Again, you, are you willing to lose last one week's worth of uh, this creation by your user community in your servers? Because if you have a weekly backup then whatever the users did in the last week will be lost, right? If they created new visualizations over the last week, it'll be lost. So it depends on that pain threshold that you have, right? 
uh, it's really you can you can have really nice uh, DR strategies uh, without having a separate data center. Although for us in PC, it is important to have a separate data center that is at least a warm data center, perhaps even a hot data center in some instances. But for most of the organizations, if the Tableau install base is small, then there is little reason why you should have a big, uh, you know, if you have 20 users uh, or maybe 100 users in your Tableau environment, I see little reason to have a different data center where Tableau is stood up and a replica of your servers are and you're doing cloning and all these other things to actually make your disaster recovery work. You can just take a backup and put it into another folder every night or every week. Uh, what generates load? I think we've talked while we're talking about it, we're talking about load and we're talking about the number of uh, Concurrency is the big load. Gen lo concurrency is the big uh, load creator, right? I mean, load in your environment is going to be created by user interaction. The number of users that are not just logging in, but that are lo that are actually loading your visualizations and interacting with your visualizations. Load is created by the backgrounder when you are actually taking backups and restores, when you are cleaning up your Tableau files, when you are actually cre creating Tableau extracts. Uh, when you are querying Tableau data engine, right, that backgrounder is invoked when you when you do that, and that's creating load. But the entire topic of concurrency can be very fuzzy, and you know people always uh, ask counter questions. I mean, what kind of load it is, right? We're very interested in the kind of load. So if the load is related to the number of users logging in, right, uh, then it's not a big deal. I mean, you need a, a separate. Um, application server. You need more application server processes running on more servers. But if the load is about visits, then you need more VisQL servers and perhaps adding more servers and more memory on it, right? So you have to take all this into consideration. The reason why I'm talking about taking all this into consideration is that I want you to kind of think about uh, optimizing your environment based on measurements about these things. Tableau allows you to measure these things right so measure them and when you measure them then make a decision on it so constant measurement of all of these types of concurrency it is important it is important to plan for growth and scalability just configuring a disaster recovery highly available environment is not enough so it's important to define thresholds I've given some rule of thumbs in this slide but that's just my two cents. The only one that comes from Tableau is really eight gigabytes per core. So if you have an eight core Tableau server, you should have a 64 gigabyte RAM, period. At least that much. Now you can go more. There is nothing wrong in going more. I would say try to move your Tableau servers on solid state drives. SSDs have become cheaper. It. I have not put that in here, but it is definitely going to give you a exponential improvement in performance of your backgrounder and data engine processes, especially your data engine processes. If you were to put your data engine process somewhere, if you were to isolate it, try to put it there. Right? And, and yes, I think we have five minutes left and we want to address some questions. So I'm going to just take this common questions about performance and then move over to that. Right. So VMware versus physical server, performance will not be affected unless you are over allocating your VMware. And infrastructure is notorious in doing that. Every VMware environment, infrastructure guys are very, um, very aggressive in over allocating their RAMs, right? And defining min and max. Don't, do, all, you are always gonna have a fight with the infrastructure guys on this. I can tell you right off the bat. Try to, if you are doing a VMware, try to define your min equal to your max. Make, make sure that you do that. Incremental versus full refresh will not cause uh, a lot of performance load for you uh, if your TDEs are big. If your TDEs are big and if your daily increments are big, then um, really uh, performing the diff itself will cause a lot of um, uh, server load. So full refreshes are fine. It's not going to add a lot when you're dealing with a big data set. On a small data set, definitely incrementals 
uh, will be a lot smaller. So um, this QL and query uh, cache issues, I'll just say that right now you don't have node persistent caches. If you have three servers in your cluster, each server has its own cache for VisQL and queries, for visualization models and queries. So if the user is then directed to the same visualization on another server, they are actually creating the cache again on that other server. So there are issues, persistence issues that come with this, right? Um, system monitoring, uh, highly recommended and should do it. Uh, what is not done by Tableau right now is CPU monitoring. Tableau doesn't do any kind of CPU or memory monitoring. So you will have to have products like Perfmon, Zabbix, etc. And at this point, um, there are a couple of scenarios I have in here and there's also security scenarios that I have in here. I highly recommend that you see them. Uh, I have done something creative in another scenario that I would have loved to talk about, but I will kind of make a post on our uh, Premier Connect Enterprise uh, discussing a uh, couple of those things. Uh, as usual, I create a bigger uh, presentation than I should, but I will now field the questions. So I think, Pat, I do, I think I have addressed the question that you have about 8-core. As I said, it is only the data engine that will really, uh, really use more than 8-cores in Tableau. Everything else, I mean, you can potentially create eight VSQL server processes to actually leverage uh, eight cores, but I don't think you're going to get a big bang for your buck there. I think that's going too far. More than creating more than four VSQL processes on a server will not give you anything because you will also need at that point uh, four data server processes. So all your eight so, so it'll, you know, it's not giving you a big bang for your buck. I recommend not going more than even three. I'm even more conservative than Tableau's recommendations in this area. Uh, so I hope that helps you. Uh, what is the second one? On the diagram on page 15, it looks like data source is misspelled. Yes, yeah, spelling has always been my challenge and not using spell check is a problem. So I apologize for that. Uh, anything else that I can, uh, Help you. We have two more minutes that we can field questions. I can also take your questions on uh, Premier Connect Enterprise. So do uh, let me know, and I'm going to post on Premier Connect Enterprise some potential future topics for Tableau. So we want to really talk a lot about uh, a lot about how we can do some dashboarding scenarios in Tableau, visualization best theory, best practices. So there are a lot of concepts that we want to do. So we might send out, a, 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 what do you call, a survey so that you can respond to it. So I'm going to work with Madison on it. Madison, sorry, I took all three. It's okay. All right. Well, thank you everyone for attending this session. Please be sure to take the survey at the end of this webinar. Um, we appreciate everyone's attendance and their questions, and we welcome, welcome anyone on Premier Connect. So thank you everyone.